Okay, now that we have a new drawing that's open and we have seen how to get started with program pads, now we need to have a tour of the interface so that you get to understand this program before we go any further. So as I said in the previous drawing, you have your menu bar that is at the top of the screen. And the reason why or the purpose of this menu bar is to provide you with drop down menus to various commands that you will be using in Procon Pads to do your detailing, drawing and anything else that you need to cover. Then you have these button bars which basically serve as shortcuts to some of the commands that you will find when you click on the drop down from the menu bar. Then as I said you have the command line which is similar to the one that you have in AutoCAD where you see the steps of your command or you type in what you want the program to do for you. Then for the status bar I will explain this much further in another video. For this video what we're going to do is we want to explain what is happening with the menu bar. So when you go to the top of the menu bar as I said in the very first video this is where you get all your commands and as you can see all your commands are task based. So the first menu or first drop down menu we have is the file drop down menu and that is what we're going to look at first. So in the file drop down menu this is where you get all the commands or tasks that have to do with file handling operations. That is to say opening new drawings, creating new drawings and also saving your drawings, closing any drawings, reading any external drawings that could be DWGs, right? writing DWGs or DXF inserting other pads drawings, inserting pictures and a various other numerous commands that you have you can use that have to do with file handling operations. So this is basically what you can do with file and we will see more of these commands as we go with the series. Next after the file you have edit. This drop down menu brings you all the commands that you can use to modify and make amendments to your geometry and line work. As you can see you have so many commands that have to do with extension of lines, trimming of lines, filling of radiuses and also the ability to erase any entity that will be on the screen. We will get to understand this menu much more as we draw our geometry and also detail our reinforced concrete. After the edit command you have the set command. This basically allows you to set the various parameters of your drawings from your units to your paper size to other things as well such as your layers and also the visibility of layers on or off or even merge entities. We will see more about this command once we get started with our drawings so you don't have to worry. Next after set is line. This is a bit self explanatory. This is what you use when you want to draw line work geometry on the screen or you want to do anything that involves splines. The other cool thing is it also has a construction line feature which we are going to explain in detail in one of the videos so don't worry we are going to get there. After line you have circle. Another self explanatory feature as well. This is where you draw all your circular or elliptical geometry and we will see more of this when we start doing our line work. After circle comes text self explanatory as well. Then after text comes point. This mostly has to do with surveying and anything so I would not really recommend you using program pads for anything that has to do with surveying or drawing things that are taken from surveyed drawings. So we will not be really using this menu we can always skip to hatch. Hatch this is very similar to AutoCAD I think you know what a hatching is and this is where or where you can call out any command that has to do with the manipulation, creation, editing, deleting, inserting or even changing the parameters of your hatch. So this could be very useful when you start detailing things that need details of what material is being used. Then after hatch comes the most important bar which I think is the most important the holy grail of program pads which is rebar. This is where everything that differentiates Procon from any other AutoCAD based environment program is. This is the thing that where you'll be placing your rebars, calling out different bars, scheduling out your bars, selecting which bar you want, selecting what cover you want. This is basically the holy grail when it comes to program pads and this is the main reason why I love program. This is what differentiates it from any other AutoCAD based environment and this is the reason why Procon is Procon and it's not the only reason why but this is one of the best reasons why Procon is Procon. And we are going to be using this extensively as we do our detailing examples and all the other tutorials that will be coming after this few series that I have planned. After rebar comes dimension which is self explanatory as well similar to the annotation tab in AutoCAD. And after dimension comes block. This is what has to do with all the manipulation of the entities that will be on your ground. And by manipulation what I'm trying to say is 
This is what you use when you try to rotate, copy, move, or do anything to your entities or line work or geometry. And it also allows you to select or make selections and also create blocks which you can save and then use in another drawing. Next after block comes macro. This is similar to the macro that you find in any other application such as Photoshop, Excel, Microsoft Excel. Microsoft Project, this just allows you to record a couple of steps or create scripts that you can use to automate a certain number of commands which will make your detailing and drawing much easier. This one is mostly for people who are more privy with computer science or who know how to do a bit of programming. So if you're not that privy, it's not really useful. But in the end, if you want to play around with it, you can play around with it. It does have a few commands that are given for you to save you time. So it's not really necessary, but sometimes it can be useful. Next, after macro, you have assign. This allows you to assign shortcut or function keys that help you to speed up your drawing work. Now, remember, that comes with a default number of assigned keys. If you want, you can always do that. Assign shortcuts to your function keys. Personally, I don't use the function keys, so it's not really useful for me. But if you want, you can play around with it. But for this purpose of the series, as you'll be learning from me, you don't really need it. After assign comes zoom self-explanatory if you don't know what zoom is by now you probably shouldn't be even watching this video next you have window this allows you to do various tasks when it comes to your window manipulation when you have so many drawings that are open in the case where you don't have one where you only have one drawing open it's not really useful but it has two important features which is show or hide the bending schedule and also the other is float your bending schedule which i don't encourage you to click on unless you want to have troubles with the bending schedule afterwards so you can always click on it again to hide the bending schedule and you're good to go after window comes help this one is self-explanatory again please mind my pronunciation of that word but help 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 if you don't know what help is i don't really know if i can help you but all I'm going to say is that there's contents, latest revisions, and if you have a license, you can always request support if you're facing any problems with your program pads. So for today's video, we're just going to wrap it here. All I wanted to do was to show you the functions that are in the menu bar. What we'll do in the next uh, videos, what are we going to look at? We're going to look at the command line, and then we are also going to look at the status bar, as it has a lot of functions that I think you should know before we proceed.